Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days and to Croctober. Is this not one of the best months of the year? Yes it is. This is when you get all those bone warming, soul warming, wonderful comfort meals in the crock pot. Let the crock pot do all the work and you just get to enjoy it on a cool-ish autumn day. They are my favorite days. Um, and today we are going to be doing slow cooker cinnamon sugar butternut squash. But first I want to give a great big shout out to my friend Jenny over at Jenny Scratch Made Kitchen because she invited us to participate in this collaboration. The links will all be down below and uh, definitely check out all the channels that are participating. There's videos, sometimes two videos uh, per day throughout the month. It's just she's worked really hard on this so you guys please check it out. There's some really really great crock pot dishes there. Today we're going to be doing the side dish. Yes, we are. I'm going to serve this with some grilled uh, pork chops for Phil. And then the rest of it is going down the road to our neighbors <laughs> because I can't eat it yet. But this is, oh, like I said, slow cooker, cinnamon sugar, butternut squash. Oh my gosh. I mean, does it get any better than that? No, it tastes so good. Not only is the name a mouthful, but you're going to want a mouthful because it is this good. Yes, it is. So first we are going to work on the butternut squash, okay? And these are, I, I never, I'm sure there's a proper way to do it, but you know, I'm not going to figure it out, right? So let's see if we can do this without, you know, making a terrible mess. This bad boy came out of my garden. Yes, it did. I'm so happy about that. Oh, look at that color. Okay, so I am just going to cut this down the middle. Use your biggest knife. Make sure that it's sharp. Be very careful, okay? Because you know, if there's a way for me to mess it up, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to get 14 people telling me, you didn't cut it right. Okay, I know I didn't. Give me a break. Anyway, as long as you get it cut without cutting yourself. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. Oh, perfect. Perfection. Perfection. That is just fantastic. So now we're going to grab a lid and a canning lid and we're going to scoop this out. This is the easiest way to do this, of course, always and forever. Um, beats the heck out of a spoon. Won't put as much strain on your wrist, which is very good. I'm going to take all of that good yummy stuff and take it down to the chickens because they are going to love it. Yes, they are. And then once we get that all scraped out and that stuff put away, we'll begin peeling it. Oh yeah. Now for those of you that are like, what can I use my used lids for? This is what, this is the perfect thing right here. Use your used lids in order to scrape out your squash. Super easy, economical, much easier on your wrist. So next, we are going to peel it. This is probably my least favorite part, but just peel that outside rind off, okay? And I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch me because I'm always quite convinced that this, while it's a fantastic, super sharp, very efficient peeler, I'm also quite convinced that one day I'm going to lose a digit with it. So you just want to peel, get that rind off, okay? Take it down to the orange. You want to get down to that orange flesh. There you go, Elise. And once that's all done, we will cut it up. Yeah. Okay, we got it all peeled, carved out, all that fun stuff. So now what you're going to do is you're going to cut it up into um, like little one-inch cubes, okay? So do that however it best works for you, but you want those small cubes in there. Does this make you nervous? Makes me nervous. Okay. Okay, so we're just gonna do like so. There we go. Mm -hmm. Because the inside is a bit of a slippery sucker. So you gotta be careful not to remove a digit, okay? And then we will just take these and toss them right in there. This is so simple, but guaranteed your family will adore it because it tastes so good. And the nice part is you can, you can make this a little more diabetic friendly. 
because we're using cinnamon, nutmeg, ground cloves, butter, a pinch of salt, and we're using a little bit of uh, brown sugar. So if you are diabetic, you can use Swerve, okay? And it'll turn out just as good. Okay, I could probably cut those down a bit, huh? So you can make it more diabetic friendly, um, or you can use Splenda, maybe add a little molasses or something like that into it. Um, you know, your, your, your pick, um, because honey and molasses, you know, they pretty much affect your glucose levels like, uh, like sugar does. So you have to moderation, moderation, my friends, that's what's best, but everyone will love this. It's so good. And one squash, you know, goes for quite a bit. So it's a really nice side dish. Tell you what. Turkey Day is coming, right? So this will be a nice side dish for Thanksgiving also. <clears throat> yes, it will. I think this is going to end up on our table for Thanksgiving this year. So talking about Thanksgiving for a minute while I'm doing this. Um, they are talking about turkey shortages, okay? And that the prices are not going to be as low as we're used to. So be prepared for that. Remember, it's not it's not the turkey that makes the holiday. It's your family, it's your friends, it's your loved ones. So if you have to, do a chicken. If you have to, do anything, okay? Just do it with the people that you care about. That's what makes it that much better. So we were talking this morning and... Um, they're talking about butter, turkeys, onions, and potatoes. My buddy John over at the trucker's kitchen gave me the heads up because he's a trucker. And uh, potatoes and onions apparently are an issue. So I know a whole bunch of you grew them for the first time this year. I opted not to this year because of everything going on. But remember, you can always get all of those from Thrive Life also. And that, to me, works really good. Uh, during times like this because it's just the two of us. I don't need 100 pounds of potatoes, you know? But if I were growing them, sure. Whoop. Flying squash. Um, but I didn't grow them. I had a little bit too much going on. So I have my Thrive Life. And that makes me happy. Also remember um, that you have until the 19th to place an order with Thrive Life at SuttonsDays.com or Sutton's Days at ThriveLife.com. World's worst consultant coming at you. Um, and you'll be entered into a drawing for a fruit variety pack giveaway that I'm doing. Okay, but you have to order by the 19th. Has to be on my sheet by the 19th. Okay, so now I have to find where Phil hid the brown sugar. Okay, so for this squash, we are going to use um, a third of a cup of brown sugar. Now, theoretically, this is supposed to be four servings. I'm thinking you can feed more people than that, okay? So I'm just using light brown sugar. There we go. We're just going to pop it on top there. And then we're going to add a little bit of cinnamon. It says like half a teaspoon. So, you know, as I said, I measure with my, my soul, my heart. Come on, come out. There we go. And poof. And then we're going to put on... Uh, Literally, just a little of nutmeg, okay? And an even smaller of cloves. There, okay. And now we're going to put the butter. So, for this recipe, um, it's a quarter of a cup of butter, which is... Dun, 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 two sticks. Is, so, a quarter cup of butter is, I believe, half of a stick. Four tablespoons. One, two, three, four. Yes, half a stick. It's that new math. Excuse me. I swear. Anesthesia does not do well with my brain. Okay, so now just like a dump cake. Have you made a dump cake, right? You're going to want to cut this into pats and then just distribute it around the top. There's no need to mix it all up at all, right? And I'm using salted butter, so opting not to add a dash of salt in here. Um, but if you use unsalted butter, I would put a pinch, you know, just literally a pinch of salt into this. Now we're going to put this into the crock pot for three hours on high. Whatever you do, 
don't sneak up and look at your crock pot, okay? Um, leave that lid on, leave it doing its due, because once you remove that lid, it changes the temperature inside. As is the norm, I will have a link down below for you to print off the recipe, okay? So we've got this set for slow cook, and now we're gonna move it to three hours. At least we're gonna try to. It's that new math, there you go. Hi. I swear, Lisa. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna put it on three hours. We'll see you in three hours when that is done. Oh my gosh, and the taste test. Okay, it's been three hours. Oh, yes. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, okay. Very happy. That looks so good. Okay, so I'm going to spoon some of this up for Phil, and we'll get a taste test. That's his little taste test. Look at that. It's hot. Okay, it's going to be hot. It smells wonderful. I know. Mmm. Very hot. <laughs> okay. It's hard being my taste tester. Mm. Mm? Mm. Mm. Okay. He's going in for seconds, so you know it's good. You know it's good. Yes, you do. So look at that. It's so, so good. I hope you guys give this a try. Like I said, it's a great side dish. It's... Wonderful mm. any time of year, but around the holidays this time of year, it's super good, right? It has all the perfect combination. Brown sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, he's emptying the bowl. <laughs> okay, there's not going to be leftovers. Okay, everybody, I hope that you check out all the links below for all the channels participating in Cracktober and for the playlist. And thank you very much, Jenny, for inviting us to be part of it. He's still... He's still inhaling it. Okay, more to come. Be sure to check out the rest of the month. It's all good. Until next time, be safe.